welcome to episode four of Striper 101 University. Um, we have been trying to get out on the water to do our on water uh, instruction portion. Obviously it has been super, super windy, keeping us off the water and unable to film effectively to show you guys what's going on. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about baits and what we use, why we use it, when to use it, where to use it. So the very first and most effective bait that we use out here is the jerk bait. What is a jerk bait? Well, a jerk bait is gonna look a lot like this. A lot of them look very, very similar. Um, this is our laser jerk here that uh, we hand make in our shop here. Um, now this is the 90% the of the time, this is what we're gonna throw while we're out there on the river or the lake. Um, the fish really react very well to these. Um, lots of casting with these and they're not just a simple retrieve. How we retrieve these is you wanna cast these out as far as you can. And as you're bringing them in, you wanna twitch it as you're bringing it in. Reel, reel, twitch, twitch, and pause, making these, hence the jerk bait, making these jerk around and uh, kind of give some action where they're going side to side, pausing, stopping, and uh, wagging in the water. Very, very effective. Now, colors on these. Um, early morning, uh, the misnomer is, is when it's dark outside and there's low light conditions that you want to go with something bright because you think the fish are going to see that more. That is the hugest misnomer. What you want to use early in the morning are your darker colors. If you've got black or something that uh, is dark, it doesn't have to actually be black. Black is a really, really good color to use in that first hour of daylight and that first you know, 45 minutes before daylight if you're getting out there early. And this is an example of what we would call a dark color. So why dark? Well, the way the fish sees um, the striped bass uh, and this accounts for other bass as well, but particularly with the striped bass, um, also known as the saxatius or the Marana saxatius, if you want to use its Latin term. So the reason that the dark colors work best is when low light, these fish, the way that they see, they need something to contrast with what little light is in there. So a dark color is going to give them more contrast to see that shape in the water. And, you know, and they also with the lines on the side, um, they can detect movement. So they have two ways to see this, but if you up your odds in the early morning, using a dark color works great. As the morning goes on and the sun's coming up, you can switch off to brighter colors. This is a trout pattern that we like to use. Um, obviously there's trout that's stalked in the river and up on the lake, Lake Mojave, and one of their primary food sources is trout. So, Trout works great, um, trout pattern. Shad patterns also work very well, and um, that's when we can use different colors and, and different sizes. So this, this is another jerk bait. This is also one that we hand make here. Um, this is a humpback jerk, and you can tell by the way it's humpback. The fish are real picky, switch into something like this. This can work really, really well and be super effective. All right, so now we, we've covered jerk baits. Now there's a couple variations of jerk baits. Um, we have these as well. These are hyper jerks. And what they do is, the difference is these don't have a lip. And to get them down, down to the depth that you want it, you just you let these sink. And they have this flat nose here on the front and these will go erratically. You wanna do a little bit more twitching and a little bit more jerking with these. But sometimes the, the picky fish, um, you tend to get a few more strikes if they're being picky on these, these littler ones. So these are representing like a minnow, um, a bass fingerling, they're, they're feeding on those as well. So that covers jerk baits. Now, um, there's been, as of lately, a really good surface bite and those boils are going a lot later in the season than they normally do, and I expect that to continue on. So top water, super effective. 
the most effective one, and I'm sure you've heard the term, or if you haven't, walking the dog. Let's see if we can get this open. Tell me when. Done. Okay, so this is a surface bait. This one's by Sixth Sense called the Dogma. And you've heard the term walking the dog. Well, basically what you're doing is you're reeling in, you're reeling in and moving that rod tip as you reel in, causing this bait on the surface to have this walking the dog action. And this is a top water bite. For me, I would trade one top water bite for 10 regular old jerk bait bites because top water, when they smash that on the surface, it's very exciting to see that and it can be violent. Um, when these fish come up and grab these. So these, these surface baits here work really good walking the dog. Um, spinner bait, uh, spinner ca spin casters will work for this, but typically a bait caster is gonna be your number one choice to work one of these baits most effectively. Um, so we'll set this one aside. Another top water bait that we like to use are the poppers. Now these are real popular with bass fishermen as far as large mouth and small mouth go. Um, super easy to work. These are a little bit easier. If, you got, if you're using a spin caster, this would probably be a better choice than walking the dog type of bait. Um, this one is a lot easier to work. And what this does is it, this stays on the surface and it, this big mouth here and this nose here, is gonna push water and make a splash. It's gonna cause a lot of racket, and you just wanna pop this, pop, 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 along the surface, especially if you see boils. You throw one of these into a boil, you're definitely going to get hit. Um, so this is a popper bait. Uh, this is a trout pattern. Again, if you're gonna go, you know, low light conditions, you know, that hour before sunset, right after sunset, or right before sunbreak, or you wanna to go to a darker color. Surface bites are usually best that first hour, that, you know, that first hour of daylight and the gray light, and same with during the sunset. Here's the same version, but in black. I like to throw these black ones when it's still a little bit dark outside or it's getting dark. The contrast hits, and for whatever reason, they, they really like to hit these dark colors. Okay, so those are probably your top three striper baits for uh, catching striped bass. Now here we're gonna get into some other ones that work really well and have, have their uses. Now, in the warmer days when there's a lot of grass in the river or there's a lot of grass up on the lake, um, these crankbaits work really good um, for striped bass. And then you also have, you also have the chance at getting a smallmouth. Because so, a smallmouth will hit these crankbaits. So I like to, with the crankbaits, stick with these orange colors. Um, what this was representing is the crawfish, what they're, they're feeding on. Um, and I like to use the bigger crankbaits for the striped bass so we can kind of stay away from the smallmouth. Even though smallmouth are really aggressive, they're still gonna hit this. But we kind of, if we're targeting striped bass, we wanna go with the bigger baits because the striped bass will tend to hit bigger baits. These are real good to use in shallow water. Um, you can see it has a little L shape here. This is a shallow diver, a two to five feet. And this really gets a striped bass going because what they're doing when they're, when these bass are shallow, they're after two things. They're after bait fish that have been corralled up there, but the main food source when you find them shallow is crawfish, that's what they're hunting. They're hunting down um, the crawfish and that's why we like to use a craw pattern. You're gonna find crawfish in there or, or trout. Um, you might find some shad in there, but the main thing you're gonna find in there are crawfish and, and trout. Okay, so now, All right. okay, so now if you're up on the lake, this is another crankbait, a larger crankbait in a shad color. Now, if we're up on the lake and you're fishing those deeper drop-offs, this is a really effective way to get your bait down there in front of the striped bass. And you can tell this is a deeper diver by this huge lip that's on here. So this one, I believe this one is going to dive. Yeah, this is a, a 15 to 20 footer. 
So this is gonna, as you crank on this, is gonna take this bait down 15, 20 feet. Uh, that's really effective where you're fishing those outside points on the lake and you've got the rocky ledges and fishing these from the deep up to the shallow. So you wanna start this out deep and you wanna bring it back up to where it's shallow. Um, super effective way if you got some finicky striped bass out there, but keep in mind, you don't always have to get that bait right in front of these fish. These fish, with as clear as the water is here, will come a long way to, to hit these baits. Now, um, back to a surface that we forgot to mention. Now, this is a super old school bait that we've been using lately and uh, it's really starting to work out. Uh, we've got it figured out and we've got some patterns going. The old school, been around for decades, the Whopper Plopper. This is about the simplest surface bait that you can possibly use. And uh, what this does is this stays on the surface and it's as simple as just a nice retrieve. You don't have to jerk them around. Actually, don't jerk these. And what this prop does is makes a, the plopper sound. That's where they come with the term whopper plopper. This is in a trout pattern. Uh, we make these here. And what this bait does is you want to just cast it out and fan cast, especially if there's a surface bite. This could also be used when there's not a surface bite. It could be used in the middle of the day because it makes so much racket in the water. It's going to attract some attention. And the striped bass do like to come up from the bottom to hit. And that's exactly what can happen here with this as this is going through the water plopping. So did forget to mention this, but this is something to not overlook. These baits have been working and uh, we're excited to see where these things go. Uh, okay, so now that we've went back to that, we're gonna get into some other alternative baits, the glide bait. Very, very, working very, very well lately. A lot of guys use swim baits. Um, we're big proponents of the glide bait and we'll have a separate episode on how to work these specifically because this, this is very technical on how to use these baits. A lot of guys are specialized. You know, all they throw is swim baits, glide baits, and they're hunting those monsters. But there's a way to use these glide baits to bring in numbers of fish as well with that chance for the monster. But we'll get into glide baits a little bit you know in, a, in, a, in another episode or two down the line and we'll do a specialized one in glide baits and how to work these but this is another great bait to use now this is a brand new bait out by six cents not trying to promote six cents although we do use a lot of it we stock a lot of it in our shop and reason being is our business in guiding uh, you know we're out there guiding 250 days a year we have to catch fish so you better believe we're going to use what's best because our business depends on catching fish so what this is is a hybrid this is the hybrid they had the release these without this lip on here making it just a glide bait a smaller glide bait which is working really well and now they've added a crank lip on this so this gives it a lot of extra action, uh, brings it down deep, and so this can create a lot, a lot of strikes, and it does, and we've caught a lot of fish on these, and that's why we're stocking these now. Um, so anyways, this is, worked just like a crankbait. Throw it out there, retrieve it, throw a couple pauses in there, and play with the speeds. Another super effective way to catch striped bass. All right, so I think we went through all of these, um, these baits here. Um, same thing, here's another one that we came out with. Um, same concept as this, it's part swim bait, part glide bait, part crank bait. We added a huge lip on here and we make these here inside the shop and um, this has worked like a crank bait as well. So both of these baits are gonna work the same. Um, this is obviously gonna attract some larger fish and same with this here. So basically, I would use these two baits up on the lake these lipless glides like this. This is another one that we manufacture. And then here's one by six cents. I would use these types without the lips that have a slow, steady sink. And I would use these out on the river. So um, next is, next and last is the wake bait. 
We make these little wake baits. These are great for a, a shallow fishing where these fish have bait corralled up or you're fishing a ledge that goes from deep to shallow and you want to cast from that shallow coming back out to the deep. And this is what's called a wake bait. Now what this does is this just stays subsurface, maybe about a foot. And this lip is basically helping this stay just under the surface, but you can tell this lip is angled way down. So what that's doing is keeping the bait from going super deep, staying shallow. So it's just a subsurface. If there's a surface bite and it's a little bit windy, and you can't work some of these other, these other baits because you know it's choppy, it's windy. This is a great bait to switch to, to just keep it right under that surface, underneath that chop so that these fish can see it. So go ahead and subscribe, share, comment, like. We're gonna keep these going. As soon as this wind stops, we're gonna get out on the water. We're gonna demonstrate in real life how to use these baits. We hope this helps. Um, go ahead and comment, ask questions. If you've got questions about any of these baits, comment in the comment section. We will reply to everyone that comments. Um, help us keep this channel going. We really want to keep the Striper 101 University going and then add some others, you know, with smallmouth and largemouth and some of the other species that we do fish out here because we don't just fish striped bass out here. This is a great fishery for smallmouth and largemouth. So go ahead, share, like, comment, ask some questions. We like to interact with everybody. Have a great day and we'll see you on episode five in just a couple days.